Good afternoon and welcome to Biztex Midday Market Watch, ASEAN Midday Market Watch. Our guest today is Jeffrey Halley, Senior Market Analyst, Asia Pacific at Oanda. Jeff, good afternoon and thanks for coming in. Always a pleasure, Brian. Happy Monday. Now, let's take a look at markets uh, before we get your CHE advice and guidance. Now, the Nikkei is closed today. Uh, the Shanghai is down 0.23% at 3,561.77. The Hang Seng is up 0.88% to 28,122.93. The ASX 200 is down 0.86% uh, at 6,699.50. The Kospi is down 1.07%. Now that's really a reversal of almost 3%. It was up of almost 2%, I think, uh, earlier this morning at 3,109.56. And closer to home, we've got Bursa Malaysia down 1.23% at 1,613.18. And the SGX is at 2,985.65. It's down 0.25%. Now, Jeff, um, what are your thoughts on the market movements uh, this morning across the region? Yeah, they were a little confusing to start. We saw a real difference between North Asia, which is China, tai Taiwan, uh, South Korea, who all opened up quite a lot higher, and the rest of ASEAN and Australia, which all opened up in the red and stayed in the red. Uh, I, I think what's driving this is the this announcement that the UN and uh, the US ambassador to the United Nations is going to formally meet the president of Taiwan and that the US administration has eased the rules with which uh, the US uh, engages with Taiwan. I think this is sort of a geopolitical concern that China might get upset. We all know China's position on Taiwan. Um, this has sort of increased the, the risk aversion, if you like, or, or frazzled nerves in Asia today. And we've seen all these stock markets turn around. We've seen the dollar rally. Uh, we've seen oil come off its highs. And I think uh, what markets really haven't priced in is the potential risk that is co could come out of the White House this week. It's unlikely that President Trump is going to go quietly and we could be in for some more geopolitical surprises uh, before then. And I think there's now becoming a, a bit of a reassessment of risks involved around this week before the changing of the guard next week. So you're, you're of the view that this, this mixed messages and uncertainty is really uh, just a combination of geopolitical rather than market-driven risk. Yeah, you know, last week all we heard was Biden, Democrat, blue wave, uh, trillions of dollars of stimulus, yada, yada, yada. And that was still going on right into the Friday close. Things have changed over the weekend. I think what everybody had forgotten is that, you know, President Trump is unlikely to be still the guy who's going to go quietly from this job. I mean, if anything, it'll be anything but. And I, I believe that what we're seeing today is some um, belated reassessment, shall we say, of the risks surrounding uh, that particular situation over the course of this week. And it may well be that, uh, you know, we, we, we that today may have been the high uh, for, for things like uh, oil and gold and also um, you know, for, for even possibly equities as well depending on what happens this week, of course. Now, Jeff, moving on to and, and staying in Asia, the Kospi has been up sharply since the start of the year. Now, this morning, it was year for, for this year alone up almost 13%, uh, but it's obviously come back down another 3% from there. Now, what's been fueling this rise uh, in such a short period of time? You know, I think there's a bit of FOMO involved there. I think there's a bit of global rotation. When the Georgia primaries came out on the, what was it, the 2nd or 3rd of January, that blue wave, they talked about more stimulus, uh, increased US consumption, trillions of dollars of infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. Then we've had the Apple, Hyundai tie up, uh, uh, Samsung uh, apparently going to build Intel chips however that situation is. There's a lot of positive news coming through and we're probably going to have a very dovish central bank uh, this Friday as well when they have their next rate setting meeting. South Korea has been an outperformer last year. I expect it to outperform this year. It has a nice mix of heavyweight industrials, which are cyclical plays, and of course, all of those very famous technology, biotech, chemical side, 
which have obviously done so, so well in 2020 and will continue to do so in 2021. So South Korea itself is in a, in a very nice spot, probably because of the actual structural makeup of its stock market, which is much more balanced than other parts of Asia. Now, looking ahead this week, what are the key numbers and reports we should be looking out for? We've got um, inflation. It's sort of inflation week this week. We have uh, we had Chinese inflation, which uh, finally moves slightly into the into the black today after being uh, in negative for the last few months. It's been uh, boosted by uh, rising commodity and energy prices. We've got inflation numbers out of Japan, uh, all over Europe. Um, and, but most importantly, we have the one from the US. And I think this is what people need to look out for. Market expectations are on Thursday, I think the number comes out, 1.5%. Um, so we've seen US yields squeeze higher over the last uh, week and a half in anticipation of more debt being issued by the Biden administration to fund all these, uh, these projects. That's had some real knock-ons in the market, yeah, notably in the US dollar and the Forex markets so far, and gold. If that number was to come in higher on Thursday, that could cause another large squeeze higher in US yields again. And that would, I reckon, um, push the US dollar onwards and upwards uh, again. The world is very, very, very short US dollars. They spent all of 2020 yes. selling them against everything. So the market is short and the potential for a short squeeze there that is, you know, could last well into February is, is quite high on my radar now. Now, Jeff, thank you very much for your time and insights. Always a pleasure, mate. Mate, uh, we've been speaking to Jeffrey Halley. He's a senior market analyst, Asia Pacific at Oanda. And I'm Brian Fernandez on Bistex Midday Market Watch. Check out www.bistex.asia for business and technology conversations.